Welcome everyone. I want to just talk to you real quick, take a moment to talk to you about protecting and boosting your immunity naturally. I wrote about it earlier this year in January, oddly around the same time that, you know, we started getting the spread of this virus, which I'm going to be very careful not to name because I uh, know that right now there is suppression of any information regarding that that is not coming from official authorities. And But what pains me is that the official authorities are not sharing with you what I want to share with you, which is how to protect and boost your immunity naturally. I got to say, you know, I'm also pained by the fact that so many people are afraid right now. I, you know, when I go out to the grocery stores, I see them wearing the gloves, wearing the masks, and I don't entirely know their situation. Maybe they do need to be wearing that. Maybe their immune systems are compromised, okay? But um, people who are just doing this just because, just out of fear, it it's very, disturbing to me because I'm not afraid and some of you might think well you know you're crazy you should be well hopefully by the time you finish watching this video you'll understand why I'm unmasked and I'm unafraid <laughs> because what I've done is I've not placed my health in the hands of other people I've not put them in the power I've taken power of my own health care and I do things on a regular basis to armor up my uh, immune system, so to speak. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Now, if you want to read about this, it is at thecrownedlife.com, my website, my blog, and it's in a post titled How to Protect and Boost Your Immunity Naturally. And we're going to talk about three main subjects. First, we're going to talk about diet, what you're consuming. Second, we're going to talk about supplements and essential oils. Third, we're going to talk about lifestyle. And then we're going to wrap it up uh, with some final words of wisdom that I've learned through the years of, you know, being a mother of three. Yeah, my oldest is 21. <laughs> my youngest is uh, going to be 15 in May. So, um, and I'm a 17 year old. So mother of three and what I've learned as somebody who is a educated, informed um, mom who wants the best, not just for herself, but for her children. So please know that whatever I recommend here, it's advice that I not only take for myself, but um, I've given to my children and it's worked for our family. It's tried and true. It's tested by life. <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. And let's start with this first uh, section on your diet. And before we talk about what not to eat, what suppresses the immune system, let's talk about what to eat, what boosts and protects the immune system. And well, let me say, if ever I sense that myself or my children are dealing with any kind of sickness, sorry about that, um, the first thing I'm going to do is abstain from starch and sugar. And interestingly, I've noticed that um, a lot of times, anytime there has been an onset of illness or the symptoms of it, I can pinpoint, oh, we just got through a holiday, we were gorging on sugar and starch, and these things suppress the immune system. Sugar suppresses the immune system, starch turns to sugar in the digestive system. And so um, one of the first things I do is starve out any bad bacteria um, by abstaining from sugar and starch because that is what feeds the growth of bad bacteria. and yeah, I would definitely avoid going on any kind of sugar binges. I know that we are coming up on Easter, right? As I'm filming this, we're coming into Easter weekend, which is really hard to not want to fill up those Easter baskets with a bunch of goodies. But um, 
especially during a time like now, maybe we need to look at some creative ideas and not, not be so much of a sugar fiend. Um, hate to be a party pooper, but yeah, maybe, maybe get something sweet, you know, but don't, don't go overboard. Let's not, you know, get into a sugar binge type thing. Now, into what I um, recommend. I'll go deeper into what to avoid in a moment, but um, beverages and, you know, clearly everybody knows, everybody knows we should be drinking pure water, you know. Um, yeah, definitely if it's filtered. I mean, I've been filtering even the fluoride out of my water since 2015 with a Berkey uh, water filter. So um, I'm pretty hardcore about that. And I usually drink raw tea. I don't like boil it or steep it. I just put the tea bag in the filtered um, water and I put the filtered water in a glass container. Um, and that's got a, a high amount of antioxidants, by the way. And that's generally what I'm drinking. Um, and yeah, I use a glass container because a lot of the plastics can leach into your um, beverages. And a, a lot of people know about that now to avoid uh, those plastics that can leach into the the drink and let off these uh, phytoestrogens. Whole nother story for another day, but generally that's right. And I've got my raw tea here with my fluoride free water in my glass, right? But if I'm not drinking that, if I'm not drinking pure water or my raw, you know, tea, then I will be drinking, um, usually in the morning, I have this, which I love, by the way. And I have a blog post about what I drink instead of coffee. Um, this has, um, it's mushroom, lion mane mushroom. And this is a think blend, but for cognition, all right, but um, any of these mushroom coffees, no, they don't taste like mushrooms, but um, they are like really good for bolstering your immune system, for, um, you know, also your gut health. And that's something I'll probably talk about in upcoming posts about, you know, bolstering your gut health because really uh, it's been long known that all diseases are linked to bad gut health. That's a, by the way, that is a quote I have in my blog. <laughs> from Hippocrates, all disease begins in the gut. So you really wanna protect your immunity. You gotta make, your, make sure your gut health is right. Unfortunately, a lot of Americans, they don't have great gut health. And you know, you see these people where they're hunched over, they got the big, you know, looks like a beer belly or they're gaining all their weight. And I mean, I went, I went through a time where I couldn't get this visceral fat off my midsection, right? And there's a lot of inflammation, all that telltale sign that your gut health is not right. And so if you want to get it right, it might be a good starting point, especially if you're drinking coffee that is very acidic and is not good for gut bacteria, right? You want to make sure that you're drinking beverages that are, are helping with that. And this is something else that I drink as an alternative to coffee. Favorite flavor, by the way, the vanilla nut and this brand. And these are like in just tea, um, tea bags. And um, again, acid free, you know, they're not gonna mess up your gut flora. They're um, gonna actually help you to stabilize your gut bacteria and protect you. And some other things, um, I just, you know, I just have this on standby, Echinacea Plus, you know, for um, helping if, somebody in the house is battling sickness or even if one person everybody starts drinking that right um and i even have um licorice tea this is also really good for your gut health if you're gonna and it's sweet also so if you have a sweet tooth and especially at night you're craving something sweet believe it or not um this can kind of 
help with that. It can curb your appetite and make you feel like you're getting something sweet, but it's not bad. It's actually helping your gut health. And um, there are also different things, you know, like um, the organic peppermint. Sometimes I drink that to just help with any kind of inflammation. If I did mess up and I, you know, ate some bad stuff that I shouldn't have, then, you know, I'll do that. But there are other ideas. Ginger peach tea. Ginger is great for, you know, fighting off um, inflammation and sickness. And there's turmeric tea. Good for the same thing. Um, I've even done chai latte decaf with almond milk. I mean, if you're going to um, put any kind of creamer in your coffees or teas, I would definitely go with something that is uh, not cow's milk based uh, because that's not necessarily going to be good for, you know, uh, your, your gut health. But I do say the chai latte with the almond milk because, or almond milk eggnog, you know, during the holidays um, because it's got ginger, cloves, and nutmeg, and those spices really boost your, your immune function. And the chicory, by the way, which I mentioned, um, and this is chicory, this is really good for as a prebiotic. It prepares your gut for processing, um, absorbing nutrients, digesting your food better. And I got to say, recently I picked this up <laughs> at the store. There's stuff... I, 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 I'm sharing these things not to overwhelm you and say that you need to go out and buy all this stuff. Although I do have links for them if you're interested. The links are embedded in my blog. You can go over there and just click the link on the product and it'll take you to Amazon if you want to buy it. But I'm showing all of these products to let you know there's so many options. There's so many things you can do. I just found this. I'm constantly finding stuff. I got a four pack of this. And yeah, it's got honey and apple cider vinegar on it and um you know i heard one person say they were just doing straight lemon water and apple cider vinegar i mean if that's all you need to get you through then and that's very inexpensive and healthy then do it work what works for you but i'm just sharing all these products here to let you know there are so many options there's no excuse for people being in bad health now, bone broth-based soups, um, this is also good for supporting the lining of your digestive tract and helping you to absorb nutrients better. Think about this. If your gut health is wrecked, then you could be putting all kinds of good stuff in your body and it's not absorbing and processing optimally. And this is just another reason why um, you need to be putting probiotics, prebiotics in your system by the way, I will be talking more about that in future upcoming blog posts about doing a diet reset because that's something I've been working on myself with my own health. But to replenish any um, stripping away of good bacteria in your gut, if you want to replenish that, a good way is with the bone broth based soups. Um, and I just, I've been finding it just, you know, the chicken or beef broth, you know, or you can even purchase ready-made soups, um, kind of like the canned or little box ready-made, but they're made with the bone broth-based soups that are a natural source of calcium that, not calcium, <laughs> collagen that help you to absorb the nutrients. And also they help with food allergies and They've got anti-aging pro uh, properties in addition to boosting your immunity. And so I definitely would say if somebody is like uh, sick around you um, and you want to go stock up on canned uh, soups at the store, this would be the better option. Yes, they cost more, but you get what you pay for. And if you want to go pay the cheapest rock bottom deal, understand you're getting, you know, with conventional canned you're not getting organic you're not getting quality meat it's not you know grass-fed organic you are um, you're getting something high in sodium not to be confused with salt 
Salt is fine as long as it's natural and you salt to taste. But when I'm talking about the sodium that comes in a lot of prepackaged manufactured foods, processed foods, okay? High in sodium are these canned uh, conventional brands. And, um, and they don't have the bone-based broth, based broth. And so um, definitely, I would say if somebody is sick around you, spare the expense to get quality it is well worth it and definitely you will pay less in medical bills and medications later on that's been my experience at least um, also you know make sure that in order to soothe your gut and improve your immunity uh, use healthy and easy to digest fats like pure unrefined coconut oil and extra virgin olive oil and um, some might want to use organic butter. I've personally recently switched to ghee, which is clarified butter, where they've removed the lactose because personally, um, I've, because of food sensitivities and my gut reset diet, I've completely gotten off of anything cow's milk based, including butter, which I used and loved for years, but now I just use ghee and, um, yeah, all these things are going to be definitely um, cheaper than margarine, but, you know, your body cannot really process margarine. And so you, it's like I told a friend recently, you're either going to pay now or you're going to pay later in medical bills. You pay now in slightly higher grocery bills or you pay later in um, medical bills, medications, and poor quality of life in your final years. And that's personally something that I'd rather not pay for. I've made my decision I'll pay for higher quality um, even if I get less and that's my other thing because I don't bulk buy. I'm, I'm more about quality than quantity and I look at my food like it's health insurance then I don't really have uh, you know a problem coming off the money and honestly I can guarantee you that I spend far less money uh, uh, with my family consistently year after year after year a uh, far less money um, for my groceries than you know and medical bills than probably other people in my situation and it's simply because I invest up front rather than later through medical bills so and nobody by the way nobody in my family is um, on any kind of pharmaceutical. So I'm, I'm not just talking and telling you that this is my experience. I'm telling you factually speaking, I have a pharmaceutical free household. Nobody here is on any kind of medications because we prevent with our diet. Okay, the other thing you wanna do is probiotic rich foods such as goat milk kefir like if you're going to have an animal based milk goat milk is probably the healthiest by the way did you know it's a bible food and a lot of uh there's a lot of research online to indicate that goat milk is more easy it's easier for humans to process than cow's milk cow's milk is intended to go for a cow you know and cows have like, did you know, they have four stomachs to digest and break down that milk. So it's very taxing on our systems to drink anything based on cow's milk. Much easier if you go with goat's milk. And um, kefir kimchi, I think it's called, I, which by the way I haven't had, but um, kombucha, kombucha is fermented tea. Had that, kind of tastes like soda in a way. Not a huge fan of it, um, but... Um, supposedly good for you know as a probiotic to help break down you know the the foods and help you to digest and process those foods uh, sauerkraut is also you know something that is a probiotic rich food and sometimes I have sauerkraut and you know um, beef you know grass-fed beef or I know some of the vegetarians are like what but, you know, um, yeah, sometimes I do, especially if I'm low on iron and, 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 B, and I need my B12. Heck yeah, you want to get your, you know, grass-fed beef. And I don't eat a lot of meat, by the way, but when I, again, 
quality over quantity. Don't eat a lot of meat, but when I do, um, it's it's the it's the healthier um, sources. Okay, raw garlic is also something that kills microorganisms and it's antiviral. And this is a great way, you know, for you to keep your immunity boosted. You can, especially if you have it raw, and you can have it raw like in fresh salsa, pico de gallo, uh, I'm from Texas, love that, right? Um, you can top the pico de gallo and salsa on your eggs or black bean soup or many, many other dishes, lots of ways to use that and incorporate that. And also natural sea salt. No, I'm not talking about the table salt that has been stripped of iodine that has been processed and is lacking trace min minerals such as zinc and selenium. Um, make sure you buy natural sea salt. I've got the link for it at my blog if you want to check it out. But that's going to protect against viral infections, unlike regular standard table salt that, like I said, has been stripped of nutrients because it's so highly processed. And what you want to avoid in your diet, okay? Dairy, especially cow's milk. I talked to you about this a little bit earlier, but especially if you're sick, this is something that even when I, you know, back before I completely got off of cow's milk, okay, but I, and I thought it was good enough that I was buying organic, which I've always bought for my kids. I've always like, that's where I drew the line. Like I've, I've got three daughters. I'm not going to give, I was not going to give them non-organic cow's milk. I'm sorry. This stuff is loaded with hormones. People are wondering why little girls are going through puberty at nine years old. Look it up online. Um, there's a lot of hormones in that cow's milk. And so I was buying organic um, but yeah I started learning over time that if you have the onset of illness let's say like you have clogged or stuffed up nasal passages um, you really want to avoid cow's milk because it's going to help this buildup of excess mucus when you're battling sickness and so as I mentioned earlier, probably the better alternative would be, say, almond or coconut milk, or if you want an animal milk, goat's milk. Um, some people are like, eh, I don't like that. Let me trust me. It's an acquired taste. And if you slowly start transitioning your kids and start introducing it more and more and more, then over time, your kids will get converted and they'll be like, you know what? I don't even like that cow's milk anymore. And that's where it is right now. We have almond milk creamer, coffee creamer. Um, I have buy chocolate almond. My kids love chocolate almond milk. Oh, so good, especially late at night when you're craving ice cream <laughs> or chocolate, you know. And so they're converted. But again, it's an acquired taste because when people are used to a certain thing and they're expecting it's going to taste like what they were drinking, then it's kind of, you know what I'm saying, it's hard to make the shift. But once they make the shift and then they try to go back to cow's milk, they're like, God, that's heavy. I feel awful after I drink it. And then you, you realize, right? And by the way, last year I had to get off of cow's milk, which was so hard for me because I love cheese. And probably the first week I got off of cheese, I was like, oh, crap, you know, how do I do this? Um, and it was hard because it's like you're kind of going through withdrawals. It's like a food addiction. But once I got through it, I felt so much better. I was amazed at what a difference it made in my health. And then when I try to go back and eat cheese later, immediately I felt it like, oh, crap. My body was saying, see, that was a problem. Get off of that. And so it's easier for me to stay off of cow's milk now that I finally am off of it. So it's just committing yourself to making the switch if you haven't already. Also, sugars and sweeteners, especially high fructose corn syrup, it's a lot of times found on the back of, of ingredient labels as HFC, S, or HFC, and they're putting it in everything. They're putting it in breads, condiments, dressings, and 
uh, even like a lot of the juices that people buy uh, at the grocery store, not even, you know, really 100% juice. They're predominantly water and sugar, sugar water with flavoring and coloring. And again, people that are just, you know, caring more about their bank account than their, their physical health, um, they will go for the cheapest. And the thing is, you get what you pay for. When you start understanding what you're paying for, you realize you're getting ripped off because you're paying premium price for sugar water. And it's not even real sugar in many cases. It's high fructose corn syrup that is, again, not easily processed, digested by the body. See, and it gives you cravings for more sugar. And it's hard to get it off, uh, get it out of your system and, you know, not gain weight from that. So don't kid yourself and think that by drinking fruit, even if it's a hundred um, fruit juice, even it's a, even if it's a hundred percent fruit juice, do not kid yourself into thinking that you're drinking a fruit, that this is in some way a substitute for fruit because it's not even high quality, 100% fruit juice is absent from the enzymes, the fibers and the other nutrients that you would get from a raw piece of unprocessed fruit. And if you want, if you really must have a sweetener, then um, probably the best is raw local honey, which has been found to be great for protecting your immune system. And especially from seasonal allergies in your area, that's why you wanna get raw local honey. And also stevia or organic coconut sugar. Um, like I have stevia here, you know, in a little dropper bottle stevia extract so sometimes we'll put this you know in our coffee or um whatever you know if you have a little bit of sweet tooth and again if you are expecting this to taste like sugar 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 it's not gonna it's gonna be very close all right but your body is gonna feel like wait a minute where's my drug <laughs> especially if you are addicted to sugar and many people are so, you know, it's going to taste great like sugar, but your body is going to feel, right? It's kind of like what I said earlier, switching from cow's milk to almond milk. It's going to be very similar, but your body's going to be like, wait a minute, something's missing. Where's my drug? And that's you coming off of the addiction. So I say it's worth making the change, but you've got to have a strength of will to do it. But if you are educated as to why, the meaning behind it, then it hopefully will help you have the will to do it. Another thing to avoid is processed and microwaved foods as much as possible. And I know, you know, it's very convenient and on occasion, I mean, I nuke my stuff too, but <laughs> think about it, it's nuke, you know? And microwaves are, you know, radiating our, our food. And that's not a conspiracy theory. That's a conspiracy reality. <laughs> uh, you can look it up online again, verifiable. And a lot of times these foods that are processed, that are manufactured, that we're buying, they are uh, nutrient deficient, nutrient dead foods. So the more you can get raw in your diet, the better. If you, for example, must eat something that's processed and prepackaged, make sure that you're always putting something off the side, like a, a side salad that's fresh. You don't have time to make yourself a big salad. You know, they have a lot of ready-made salad kits that you can buy down at the store, the grocery store, but always try to make sure if you can't have completely fresh raw stuff that you are supplementing with every you know um and and i'm really a big believer in eating as much raw pure whole food as you can because uh, many years ago i came across a youtube video and you can find it here uh on youtube still about the ageless woman and this woman is uh gosh she's got to be in her 70s now and she looks younger than me and the reason why is because she's been eating this way for 30 years, raw, pure, organic. And, and I, after I saw that video, I became a big believer in the um, concept that if you eat death, you're going to look like death. And that's the problem with a lot of Americans. We're eating a lot of dead nutrients or nutrient deficient foods. When you put foods that have active live enzymes because they're raw you're putting life into your body and then you look more alive you look younger by the way i'm going to be talking about anti-aging and future blog posts if y'all are not 
if you're not following me, you know, on my blog, you might want to check it out at thecrownlife.com because I, I will be talking more about this. Um, and yeah, obviously, if you want to make sure that you're getting uh, notified of when these posts become available, make sure you've subscribed and you've activated the bell to get notifications. Now, finally, avoid hydro hydrogenated, hydrogenated, <laughs> I know how to say that. I really do. Uh, hydrogenated oils like soybean, canola, corn oils, okay? Um, these are highly inflammatory, um, very difficult for your body to process. And so that is a reason why alternatively I recommend that if you're using fats, use healthy fats like pure unrefined coconut oil, extra virgin olive oil, ghee, which is clarified butter, or organic butter. And I think that if you follow this advice, it's going to help you. If any of you are dealing with a condition known as leaky gut syndrome, which is sounds pretty nasty, like, ooh, that's not me. I don't have anything like that. Um, it's also known as intestinal permeability. And this is from eating all these foods that I listed, what to avoid, okay? Um, dairy, especially cow's milk, sugars and sweet sweeteners, especially high fructose corn syrup, processed microwave foods, hydrogenated oils like soybean, canola, corn oil, and they're all in these conventional brands that a lot of people are buying and eating at the grocery store and at restaurants. So if you've been eating those foods that I listed on the foods to avoid, it's very possible that you have this intestinal permeability issue, also known as leaky gut syndrome. And what happens is that makes it very difficult for your body to absorb nutrients properly. And as a result, your immune system is weak and out of balance. Moving on to you know the second part of this, um, supplements and essential oils. One thing that I've done for years for myself and my children is if I feel the onset of uh, sickness or risk of sickness, because I know somebody around me is getting sick or they got sick, we start megadosing vitamin C. And, um, you know, I will take probably three to five times the recommended amount, daily amount. And I learned quite some time ago that the FDA, the Food and Drug Administra Administration, has set the RDA, the recommended daily amount for vitamin C, based on studies about that are from the 18th century about how to prevent scurvy. And so, what we are consider what is considered the bare minimum amount is really based on what is the bare minimum amount to not contract. A skin disease, scurvy. Uh, again, something you can look up online if you think it's questionable. But um, this is like for extreme vitamin C deficiencies, right? And so really the standard is super duper low. Um, so especially if I feel like my body is under attack or it could potentially be under attack, I will mega dose three to five times what the FDA recommends daily. And there are other, you know, supplements that I've used off and on, like colloidal silver. I've got some right here, you know. And um, this inhibits bacteria, the growth of bacteria. And But there is a warning not to use it for more than 14 days consecutive. And also, you know, echinacea, I talked to you about that. I have got it in, you know, tea form, but you can, you know, get it in pill form. Um, that is, you know, going to support your immune system. It also reduces your chances of contracting a virus, especially helpful for acute upper respiratory infections. And then elderberry, which I told you I got it in a drink, but, you know, you can get elderberry in a number of ways. So um, this is going to fight viral and bacterial infections, colds, flu, inflammation. It will help your respiratory tract. And um, there have also been studies showing that elderberry reduces the duration of the flu if you have, you know, contracted it. And 
they found that people heal on average four days faster than without the elderberry. So um, I've even in the past purchased elderberry gummy bears and uh, or gummies and um, elderberry syrup for my kids and very pleased with the results. Licorice root, which, you know, I'm, I told you I've got this in tea form, but you could get it in pill form as well. Um, this is something that uh, is antiviral. It, it stimulates the immune system. It's good if you've got a sore throat. Um, get us a cough remedy or a pain rem, uh, relief. Um, and, and shockingly, I'm going to tell you, when we got this, I was like, what? Is this going to be nasty? It was, oh my gosh, we've kept <laughs> both of these. You would think, oh, I don't know about this, right? These both taste really, really, really good. Um, they're sweet, naturally. You don't even have to add honey or stevia. They are naturally sweet, herbally sweet, okay? And um, they just taste good. I mean, you don't feel like you're taking medicine or anything. Also, oregano oil, oil of oregano, is antibacterial, antifungal, antiparasitic, um, and antiviral. Okay, so there's like, by the way, online you can look up, there's over 800 scientific studies showing health benefits that have proven this to be even more um, effective than antibiotics because a lot of antibiotics they kill off bad bacteria um, good bacteria as well as bad bacteria this is killing off the bad right this doesn't have harmful side effects like some antibiotics and um my daughter actually has been using this uh, because she got a tooth infection and it's been really potent really powerful um, we did try to take antibiotics that were prescribed for that, and she had a horrible, horrible reaction. And so this is what we used alternatively, and it has been um, it cleared up her infection. Within 24 hours, pain was gone. And um, this is definitely something I would go to from now on. If ever in need of antibiotics, I would turn to this first, me personally as a mom. Um, by the way, there's a lot of research showing that antibiotics are way over prescribed and people are dealing, building up resistance. So not a good thing to be using antibiotics willy nilly. I would reserve it for life or death situations. Um, but anyway, I think that the best way you could get little, you could buy it in pill form if you want, um, but personally I've learned that what's optimal is to ingest these um, nutrients through your food if possible. Um, that, uh, that ensures the best possible absorption and so let's say for example you wanted to supplement with vitamin C, well instead of buying those chewable tablets, which of course you could totally do. Um, you could instead buy foods that are high, naturally high in vitamin C, such as cantaloupe, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kiwi, oranges, papaya, pineapple, strawberries. And, you know, also another good reason for supplementing naturally through your food, your diet, is because a lot of times, you know, if you get these things in pill form, um, this might not be a good example, right? I mean, definitely this, you want something potent if you're, if you're dealing with an infection, okay? But um, if you're buying something else in pill form, um, you, um, there is a risk of uh, taking too much of it for too long, and, and that could be damaging. Um, eating it naturally has a way of regulating that intake, right? But generally what I've heard is that if you are taking it in supplement form, it's good to not be supplementing consistently for more than two weeks, like two weeks on and then abstain from the supplements for about a week and then repeat the same cycle two weeks on, a week off. And of course, I'm not a doctor, so, you know, make your own healthcare decisions. This is what I do. This is what I've learned. That's what I've heard. I'm just passing along. Go talk to your trusted healthcare provider or source. <laughs> you know, I go to drmercola.com, by the way, mercola.com. I go to um, 
naturalnews.com, thehealthranger.com. Oh, I love Dr. Axe. Dot com D R A X E. These are places that I go to and trust. Um, but you know, I'm just sharing information with you. You know, take responsibility for your own health, right? Um, by the way, I didn't. I, I also forgot to mention I've got you know the licorice root. You can get it in droplet form as well, and I've done that. I think this is actually my daughter. She was putting it on her tooth to help heal that infection. So there are a number of ways. Like when I tell you, you can get, for example, licorice, you know, you could buy it in pill supplement. You could get it in liquid. You could get it in tea. Dear God, however, the sky's the limit. There's so many options. I hope I'm not overwhelming you, but I want to encourage you to know there's so many options. There's no reason for people to be sick. Once you are informed, you should know. Okay, very quickly, essential oils that might help eucalyptus, really great as a decongestant, especially, you know, I've got a recipe on my website if you wanna know about that, um, how to uh, maybe put it in water and create a bit of a steam bath to open things up. Um, it can kill bacteria, it can soothe inflamed mucous membranes. Um, also peppermint oil along with it and rosemary oil and thyme essential oil can be added into a blend that are gonna, that will give you sinus relief that that recipe is on my website um, frankincense or sandalwood with a carrier oil um, can be massaged into your chest and that can soothe um, coughing like when I say carrier oil you know like apricot oil or um, coconut oil or there's all kinds of different oils right and the reason why those are recommended because sometimes if you use the essential oil uh, directly right sometimes that can irritate your skin but when you dilute it with like a carrier oil then you you have less of a risk of having a reaction on your skin all right, finally, we're on to lifestyle. We're about to wrap it up. It's been a long video. My God, if you made it this far, my hat's off to you. <laughs> okay, so, you know, I want to talk more about this in actually future blog posts about stress because I think that stress causes more sickness than people are even aware of. And, and then, of course, you know, if you add to that, that you are spending a lot of your day days working in or going to school with, you know, a lot of people, right? Let's say you work in a restaurant or you're a student or you're a teacher, you work at a daycare facility uh, or a hospital, you know, you're around a lot of people. This is very challenging for your health and um, it's also stressing to be in constant contact with the public, right? I don't envy that line of work, to tell you the truth. Um, so it's very important to deal with also things spreading very fast in those environments. And I, you know, I'm not wanting to scare anybody about it, but we know, we know that regular hand washing is really important. And um, by the way, I've got another blog post out. I'll probably do a video talking more about this natural, all natural hand sanitizer spray that I've made with, you know, again, all natural ingredients. And I explain why I don't buy conventional uh, hand sanitizers. But if you can't, like, I'm not a germaphobe. I'm really not. But um, the thing is, like, if you're out and about with this, what's going on right now, and you can't wash your hands, um, then I, you know, carry this in your purse, you know, make this at home, carry this. By the way, I am thinking about giving this away um, <laughs> on my channel, doing a free giveaway of this for um, April, okay? So if you're not signed up to my newsletter, um, some of you might be watching this video much, much later, but um, you know, I, it, the people who are signed up for my monthly newsletter are always eligible for the free monthly giveaways. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to be making a bottle just for one special someone and giving it away in the month of May, 2020, right? So sign up if you want to be eligible for the giveaway because these things are hard to find, right? 
uh, if you try to buy the conventional stuff at the store, a lot of times the, the, the shelves are empty. And, um, but that's fine because I think that this is much better product, actually, much better product. And I've got the recipe for it on my blog. If you are interested in making your own and you don't want to leave it up to chance and winning, you know, on my giveaway. So, um, in addition to the hand washing and trying to avoid so much contact with people, um, if possible, you know, get plenty of sleep and because the lack of sleep really compromises people's immune system and it can leave them um, depleted of nutrients as well. Um, and some of you are dealing with sleep deficits and that can really predispose you to um, being susceptible to, to illness. So um, in addition to the diet and the supplement advice that I mentioned earlier, um, the only other thing I could add is really that, you know, try to avoid heavy metals, um, mercury, aluminum, lead, because those can endanger cell functioning and they can act as neurotoxins. Um, and one way to do this is to avoid mercury rich food like king mackerel, marlin, orange ruffy, shark, swordfish, tilefish, ahi tuna, and big eye tuna. A um, lot of people just avoid fish altogether. You know, that's not a great idea because there's a lot of healthy things in there like omega 3s. Um, and it's also, you know, can be a, a budget meal. Sometimes if I'm like trying to have a low budget meal, I will just get a can of tuna and I will put some extra virgin olive oil in there, fresh cracked peppercorn and uh, fresh all natural salt with the trace minerals that I mentioned earlier, stir it up and just eat it straight from the can, you know, but I'm buying tuna that is higher quality and some you can get some of these brands will say on the label that it's been tested as low mercury if you're concerned about that. Um, I, I wouldn't um, avoid f fish altogether, but just um, avoid the fish that I mentioned that are high in, uh, you know, that are mercury rich. Ten they have a tendency to be, um, and maybe make it a point to buy um, like tuna that is tested, has already been tested independently as low in mercury. So um, also beware that mercury dental fillings, a lot of us 80s kids have them, I know I do. And um, now they've got amalgam, but those come with risks as well. Um, vaccines are loaded with um, thimerosal, which is a derivative of, uh, of a mercury. It's a mercury derivative, okay? And this is, this is <laughs> um, a neurotoxin, okay? So um, I know a lot of people like to dismiss it that's a whole nother subject for another day but unfortunately we're dealing with a lot of people who are getting so many vaccines up to 150 vaccines by the first 18 years of life now and there have been no studies on these trace amounts and how much they add up in the body so um, what we do know is that no vaccine is 100 percent safe and effective and that it's unnatural and is a threat to the body's natural immunity. So um, in my house, I've gambled on naturally protecting immunity rather than artificially or conventionally. Um, to me, that's the safest bet and it's proved to work out very well. Like I said, I have three kids, uh, almost 15 year old, 17 year old, 21 year old, and they are all completely vaccine free. And my children are uncommonly, uncommonly healthy. And I think the last time I received a vaccine was at age 17 years old, which I had a horrible reaction to. And um, haven't had a vaccine since. And so, and technically if you haven't received vaccines since you were a teenager and you're my age, um, According to the medical standards, we're not up to date on our vaccines. We are not vaxxed, right? Um, but I, I'm, I'm uncommonly healthy. I, I never go, never have a need to go to a doctor, okay? My medical bills are exceptionally, like, I, 
they're non-existent, right? So um, I have no regrets in choosing that. And if people want to think I'm crazy, that's fine. I, I, I know from 21 years experience, this method works. My children and myself, we are uncommonly healthy because we have avoided conventional methods of immunity boosting, which in my opinion don't actually do that, but that's another show for another day. Um, avoid if you can also herbicides and pesticides by buying organic produce because, um, and maybe you can't afford that, right? And so this is what I would suggest as well, that if you cannot afford to buy all organic produce, then buy um, non-organic in moderation like apples, celery, cucumbers, cherries, grapes, nectarines, peaches, spinach, strawberries, sweet bell peppers, tomatoes. Buy those in moderation because that is what's most at risk. Um, the other foods that I did not mention, they have like a peel, right? A banana has a peel where it's a protective barrier to these herbicides and pesticides. If you have to buy those foods that I mentioned and they're not organic, wash them. Wash them well, okay? You want to try to knock off any kind of herbicides or pesticides as much as you can to try to, you know, keep the chemicals at bay that are not good. Also, hormone imbalances. Try to avoid that by avoiding non-organic dairy and meat as much as possible. And if you're going to buy dairy, look for organic, RBST-free on the label. And when buying meat, look for organic, grass-fed on the label. When buying eggs, look for cage-free, free roaming on the label, along with hormone and antibiotic-free. There's no need to be putting antibiotics and hormones in your system uh, when you're not in need of it, right? People are being medicated 24-7 by conventional foods and they don't even know it. And then they wonder why they're sick and the so-called medications are not working. Last but not least, stress, you know, um, the way I think that we need to reduce chronic stress as much as possible is kind of what I said earlier by trying to avoid these high stress jobs where you're engaging a lot with the public. Well, easier said than done. Some of us can't. That's our profession, right? Uh, getting your sleep. Um, but just bear in mind that when your cortisol level, your cortisol levels are high when your stress levels are high and when that happens, high cortisol levels, they really interfere with our ability to process food and absorb nutrients properly. So yeah, it ties back into the leaky gut stuff I was talking to y'all about earlier that's so common with Americans because we're living a very high stress life. And one easy point I would recommend is maybe going out once a day at least to get 15 minutes of direct sunlight per day that has a very healing effect on our energy levels and it gives us the best source of all natural vitamin D and it helps, which by the way, it helps boost immunity. If you can't, you know, take your D3, right? I've even got a bottle of that around here somewhere. <laughs> D3, you know, if you can't get out and get the sunlight, um, take it in supplement form, but getting it 15 minutes of direct sunlight a day is um, really not only good for getting that vitamin D3, but helping you to get a change of space and scenery and decompress from life's worries. All right, so wrapping this up, let me say that if all else fails, remember, you know, and I think a lot of people, they don't, they don't see life this way. And so I, it bears mentioning that, you know, your body is divinely designed to heal. It really is. I, I think it's unfortunate so many people, because of conventional medicine becoming almost like a religion in the United States and many other countries, people look at, um, you know, the body like a ticking time bomb, when in reality, it's been divinely designed to heal and I think if you consider all these options that I've presented to you you know and you're not overwhelmed by them by now 
What you see instead is a plethora of options at your fingertips. There's an abundance at our disposal um, so that we can recover when we get sick or just flat out avoid it in the first place. And once you start realizing how much we're empowered to protect our health, then you realize that the reason for sickness is often not because our bodies have failed us, but because we've failed our bodies. We have failed to support our own immune systems. And I know a lot of people think, you know, I just want to get a shot, right? But the problem with this is that a lot of the shots are based on last year's virus. Did you know that? Did you know that? And that the only way um, well, there all have also been studies showing that they that these flu shots only prevent the flu in 1.5 out of 100 people. Um, not to mention they are loaded with the neurotoxins I mentioned before, which are being used as preservatives. So truthfully, again, like I said, there's no conventional vaccine that is 100% safe and effective. So somehow we've gotten it ingrained in our culture that sickness is bad and to be avoided at all costs, even if it, makes ta even if it means taking on uh, greater risks of adverse reactions to vaccines and medications. And um, that's why we've got a culture of people who, as soon as they get a fever, they run and go get a, you know, something to kill the fever, when in reality, that's the body's way of killing off bacteria, bad bacteria and burning it out, burning the bacteria, right? But again, if you've been programmed to see fever as bad and make it go away and put a medication in there, then you don't, you're not working with your immune system. You're not respecting and honoring the way the body works. And so a lot of people are, what's happening is overvening in the body's natural process because we don't trust it. And so, you know, I want to encourage you to get to a place where you have more faith and trust in the body's natural ability to heal, being divinely designed to heal. And yeah, if it makes you feel better to pop a pill, maybe, yeah, the supplements I mentioned, or, you know, if you psychologically want to take something over the counter, um, I will say that I have used um, oxycillium. It's a homeopathic remedy, by the way. Um, the link for it is in my um, on my blog. Okay, but it's for dealing with flu-like symptoms, and um, and it's like a it's a little you know um, pill that you actually open the capsule up and you you eat it. Okay, and it tastes good actually. Shockingly. It does, and um, it helps for flu-like symptoms, and I've gotten that, like if one of my daughters has ever gotten any kind of, sim you know, like, like they're coming down with that, we all take it, the whole house will take it. And um, by doing this, by taking this product, we have successfully, successfully stopped uh, flu from spreading, and that's, by the way, the only pill that I really have uh, felt good about taking and I'm willing to take again that it's but again it's a homeopathic remedy so um, I hope that by sharing all of this um, you know what I've learned from 21 years of mothering three children and being really committed to natural health alternative health and healing I hope that it helps somebody out there I hope you got something positive out of this those of you have made it this far wow hour long <laughs> my god you are a trooper um and I I hope that it has blessed you thanks for watching this uh far into the video and happy health and healing to you be blessed